Hello and welcome. My name's Craig Wilmore and I'm a curriculum specialist for McGraw-Hill. Today's Bite Size PD is Close Reading with Writing and Reporting to Parents, Part 2. Last week you had another one, which was Part 1, which dealt mostly with the Reading Writing Companion and the Shared Read. Let's just go over the class, the, the norms for today. Um, this is the title of our PD. And I, I'm asking the question, which instructional routine is easiest for you to remember? All of those routines that we now have that we're using in Wonders. Think about that for just a minute. And as we move on, these are the norms. Uh, remember to be responsive here. Be respectful. Listen, if you have questions, please type them into the chat. Um, and then use your technology that you have at hand. Mute your computer. And again, if you do have questions, type them into the chat box. And I'll try and get to the chat at the end of this presentation. And these are the learning in intentions for today and the success criteria to better understand the close reading um, and the reading writing companion from Wonders. Identify daily writing opportunities in the reading writing companion. Our focus today is on the anthology pages. And then the success criteria, commit to having students writing every day in their reading writing companion from Wonders. So we're going to be talking about analytical writing and the students have already been writing in their reading writing companions on the uh, shared reading with reading um, on the mini lessons, the reread activities. They've been responding to the reading with that shared read and then we have embedded writing opportunities throughout, asking students to just summarize a story that they just read, talk to a peer, and then write that down. And also just a little bit about the reader's notebook. So as we dive in, I'm gonna start from the primary grades and work my way up through fifth grade. In the anchor text, in the reading writing companion, it will say anchor text up at the top, and in a primary, such as this first grade, we have this talk, write, routine, where students are talking about a certain page or a couple of pages that you have read in the anthology or in kindergarten in the big book. You're showing those pages to the students. We ask the students to collaborate in conversation. And that's where we see that talk about the sentences with rhyming words on page 12 and 13. Then we have right pairs of rhyming words from the story. And so we're actually asking the students to do this. Remember that as you did the shared read, you were teaching and you were modeling doing these exact types of items. Now in the anchor text is where the students have that opportunity to show what they have retained. They still may need a little bit of support and modeling, but by now, mid-year through, they should be able to write pairs of rhyming words, what they would find rhyming in page 12, what they find writing or rhyming on page 13. And then at the bottom, we ask the students to analytically write again. What feelings does the story have because of the rhyming words? This was from one of the first anchor texts that the students read in this grade level. But we want the students to be responding to these anchor text opportunities. In first grade and kindergarten, you will have writing practice embedded in the reading writing companions. We're not expecting them at any time during this part of the year to write these perfect sem sentences, such as the one you see on the left-hand side about my dog gobbled up my homework. But we are asking them to write down words. We're writing them, asking them to at least write down what they think their the the sounding or the letter writing um the spelling of each word is as they're moving through and you can see these routines of talk listen circle and draw or on the right hand side talk write circle and draw again grammar becomes a critical piece and so we're asking students to look for specific details such as in this one we're looking for verbs then we ask students to write about that anchor text. Here, we're asking them write four more pages of the story. Well, obviously in here, 
there is one sentence per page and we're asking the students to write four more sentences to complete or extend the story out. We are not expecting perfection in the writing. In fact, in the teacher's edition, you have modeled writing from what we would expect with a model one, a model two. And here are what the strengths are and what the next steps would be for you to prepare your students to be able to write. As we continue, we move into that developmental writing, which is found at the bottom of this page in your teacher's edition on handwriting, identifying what are some of the problems where they might be writing too lightly. They might be writing in on the lines incorrectly, or they may even be gripping the pencil incorrectly. And so you can find differentiated activities in the handwriting lessons within. You will see that writing progression. What should we expect at the beginning of the year? What's the developmental process as we move through the year, all the way up to a writing model 10, which is where we would expect first graders to graduate writing in this style. Now, as we move back into a middle school or intermediate grades, grades two through five, I want you to think about your anchor text. And in the text, you have the green reread prompts and the reading writing lessons for the anchor text. There are no images in the anchor text to reference this. So I'm gonna go into my actual document of a teacher's edition here. This is third grade. This is unit four, text set one and we're reading The Talented Clementine. As we go through, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner this reread prompt, the green, and you will see the reading writing companion, and these are the pages we will be using. Page 142, 143, 144. As I scroll down through, I'm looking for any green reread prompt in my anchor text, and I see one on this page here. It's only talking about text features, realistic and, and details. There's nothing about a reading writing companion. But as I continue scrolling down through, now I come to this one where it says author's craft contrast. Keep in mind, you just taught this author's craft contrast as you were doing the shared read on days one and two. We are now giving the students opportunities to practice and apply that skill of author's craft. It is telling me the reading writing companion, page 142. So here's where you're going to find where we need to go to the reading writing companion. We're going to be asking the question here. And then if I go back into my presentation and click, you're going to see those re green reread icons in your text. They will tell you what it is you're looking for, and then it's going to give you that call out. Here we're using the Reading Writing Companion, page 25 in this example on my screen. The cor corresponding page for that is in the Reading Writing Companion, and it looks like this. There are three Reading Writing Companion pages for each of the anchor texts in grades two through five. You have two days to do those three pages. So you have day five and day six to do these three pages. So the idea is we want the students to read whatever the literature page is from the anthology. In this example on my screen, we're looking at literature anthology, page 13. And we have them turn and talk to a partner about what they see here. Then we ask students to cite the text evidence. In the beginning of the year, you probably had to model a lot of this, but by this time of the year and this many units and text sets, students should be able to collaborate with a partner and cite text evidence about what they're seeing in these graphic organizers. So the first two items that talk about it, the cite text evidence, can be done in collaborative conversations with a partner or with a small group. Once they have done that, then at the bottom, we ask the students to write a response to a sentence starter that is there. 
Here's another example from the story Earthquakes. And you have that question, how does the author use photographs to help you understand what it is like to live through an earthquake? Again, students talk about it. They're going to cite text evidence together, but this is the students doing it. The teacher is not writing it down and asking the students to copy off the board what they've written. This needs to be independent and it needs, or not independent, but it needs to be collaboratively with the students. And then at the very bottom, we're asking students to write. So again, the author uses photographs to help me understand earthquakes by, and then they complete that sentence in there. Inside the anchor text in your teacher's edition, you then have a fourth page that you would do on day six. So day five and six of a text set, you are doing the reread prompts from the reading writing companion and matching that up with the anchor text. Here you see that respond to the reading, which is a deeper understanding of writing out what they took away from the story that they read. So in this respond to the reading, it says, discuss the prompt below, use your notes and text evidence to support your response. And so then it says, why is it important to understand how earthquakes affect people? We know some students are not going to gather uh, enough information or they don't quite know what to write, which is why if you look to the right-hand side at the quick tip, these are sentence starters. You can tell the students, take one of those sentence starters, write it on the blanks, and then answer the question in a couple of sentences. Then take another sentence starter, write it in the blank, and then continue to answer that. This way, we are building up to being able to write for longer periods of time. We're building stamina in our analytical writing so that we will be ready later on for the process writing. At the bottom of each of these pages, you have an opportunity for students to check in to say, how do they feel they're doing within this? Now, if I go back to my online section here and I go into my pages, if I go to this unit four, week one, day five, and I click this open, here is my literature anthology. When I click in there, it's actually going to show me the anthology. It's going to show me those pages from the anchor text that I would want students to write in. So here is the page that corresponds with Clementine, the talented Clementine. As I open this up and make it a little bit larger, you can see now, talk about it. Reread the paragraphs three and four on the literature anthology, page 284. We're then going to cite the text evidence and then write down here. Students can also do interactive writing on this page digitally. All they have to do is type or click. See where my hand is under clues? When I click, it opens up a text box. Type their answers here. Then they just click add and it puts their information down here. They can continue to edit that by clicking in there adding more to this, and then adding. They can type down here in the blank, write at, I know that Marguerite, Margaret's teacher and Mrs. Rice are different, how? So they would make those comments. This is page one for day five. Page two for day five. I would suggest this page for day six. So the third page would be on day six that you would have the students writing. And notice we're asking them to do a little bit more writing each time with this space down below. And then finally, the fourth page that we have is that respond to reading. Again, you will have those quick tips over here on the right-hand side. These are sentence starters. So a, a, a student might come in here and start typing one of those comments down there, and then they'll continue. So they use the sentence starters, 
and then continue writing on with that sentence starter. Notice it opens up a whole blank page where now the students are going to be able to type their answers and or their comments here and continue. So those are the four pages that go along with the anchor text. We have four days to read the anchor text. Day three and day four are the red read. Day five and day six are the green reread. This is where we truly need to have our students writing in these reading writing companions. Because when you send them home at the end of a unit, or at the end of the two units in grades three, four, and five, parents are going to be looking through these. And this is that communication to the parents, what their students are doing, what they're writing, what is their level of writing, how is their sentence structure. They're going to be able to look through and identify how their students are doing in the class by what they're writing in their books. If these pages go home and they're blank, the parents are concerned because they don't know if their students are learning or what they're learning in the classroom. They want to see these types of things. So it is important that we make sure we are using the physical book to write in here, or at least using the digital side of this to have the students write in their books. Um, as we continue on, all of the re-anchor text activities follow that talk, cite, and write routine. And so in this particular one, you see it's going back to the story of, um, I believe this was um, Aguinaldo, the story of Aguinaldo. And they're talking about it as collaborative conversation partners or table groups. We're citing that text evidence in here together. That's a hard thing to do. And so we want them to do this collaboratively. But once they've had the conversations and they've cited text evidence, students should have enough information in their brains and on their paper here that they can then write about this sentence starter at the bottom of this page. So the respond to reading then provides those quick tips. We analyze that prompt. We state a clear topic of opinion. We cite the text evidence and provide strong conclusions. There are additional writing prompts embedded throughout your teacher's edition. So for example, on the page on the left-hand side, you're going to see this opportunity to summarize. This comes as we're reading a one of the stories in there, and it's just a quick write. After their initial reads have students pa student pairs, summarize the selection orally using their notes, then have them write a summary in their reader's notebook, okay? Remember, when we did the initial implementation, we talked about that reader's notebook. There's not a reader's notebook per se in Wonders. It is a composition notebook, or it is college-ruled paper, or it might just be scratch paper. It's a place where students can just write down but we're asking them after they read to summarize in pairs and then write down using their notes, a summary of that story. There are many, many opportunities within Wonders for that embedded writing within here. Now, the reader's notebook, there is, a, there, it says the reader's notebook is any space for students to record their ideas and thoughts. However, in the shared read digitally, there are places for the students to do that. So let me go back in here to my student material, and I'm just going to go backwards to the shared read and show some of those items. So here, the Impossible Pet Show, down in the bottom right-hand corner. So let me get to the bottom right-hand corner of this page you will see where it says author's craft. How does the author help you understand what the phrase, my heart sank, means? You have a little page, it's a notebook. When I open this, it's bringing up my binder. Every student has a binder that's attached to this. And so in here, we're going to have the students writing. 
So here, a student might come in here. This is about, and then they continue writing whatever it is they need to in this section here. I don't know why this keeps unhiding itself there. They submit that, and now the teacher has the ability to go online and view that child's submission of what they just wrote about on this page. Typically, at the bottom of each of the pages in the shared read is that little opportunity to respond to the reading of that shared read. This is one of the only places the students are going to have that capability is in the shared read. But as we move through and we get over into the anchor text, now we have the anchor text where they write within the text itself and fill in those blanks as they're completing this, including that responding to the reading portion. We then move to that paired reading selection. This is day seven and day eight. Day seven and day eight, we might be reading um, with the paired reading selection. And we move over here to that paired selection. Here you're talking about specific things such as figurative language, the story, we're asking students to cite text evidence in there. And then we make connections. Notice all of the opportunities here for that writing. So every day, students should be looking at opportunities for writing within the program. Now, in the Student Reading Writing Companion, you're going to find student ownership of writing. What I know now, this is typically associated with the writing process. But this is, if we're reading about an argumentative essay, they want to know about what we know, what I've learned as we've gone through and read about this. Now, I'm going to open up for questions and answers. Leanne, has there been anything in the chat? No, nothing in the chat. And I'm actually, since it's just the three of us on there right now, I thought we had one more coach join us. Sarah, are you still on? There's only three people on. Oh, then she must have gotten off. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording if you're okay with that. I'm fine.